Welcome to workshop topics, comparing three types of knurling tools. One of these knurling tools I've had for many years, the other two arrived in the post this morning. This is the unboxing part of the video where I remove the knurling tools from the packaging. My weapon of choice for this job is a very good quality double-edged Viking battle axe. This battle axe is very nasty and it's extremely sharp. I'll show you, watch this. At this point of the video I must say please do not try this at home. I really am taking great care not to chop any of my fingers off in the process and as you can see it really is sharp, it cut the polythene with no problem at all. That's the first knurling tool out of the packaging and now very carefully I'm unboxing the other one which is sealed with sellotape around the edge. But for some reason even when I remove the sellotape this package has been quite difficult so it's time for a bit of ultraviolence. As you can see this beautiful double-edged Viking battle axe made short work of the packaging. As I remove this knurling tool from the remains of the box, you can clearly see that this is a clamp type of knurling tool. And it even comes with two spare knurls that I'm putting in a plastic bag. At this point I'd just like to say these are very cheap tools. When I looked online for some knurling tools, most of them appeared to be very cheap. The knurling tool in my left hand was not cheap and it's given great service over the last 35 years. Before I put my double-edged Viking battle axe back with my modest collection of medieval weapons of mass destruction, I thought I would see how good it was at cutting metal. I chopped up various pieces of metal with varying degrees of success, because in the workshop I cannot swing the axe properly, the lights are in the way. Keep your eye on this piece of copper pipe. Maybe this is going to be an alternative to the bandsaw. That's if I could find the pieces that flew in all directions. I think for now I will put it by the door so I don't forget to take it into the house. The first of the knurling tools to be tested on a piece of steel is the clamp type. The steel bar is in the chuck and it's not particularly concentric, so this knurling tool, which is quite loosely made, floats about on it, but it's still cutting a knurl on the metal. If you're not into engineering you may be thinking, well why do you want to cut knurls on metal anyway? It just makes pieces of metal easier to grip with your fingers, and in certain applications it looks quite good too. When I try touching it with my fingers, the knurl is well defined. For a job like this though, I would just use my other knurling tool that puts a lot of side pressure on the work. This piece of steel is tough enough to stand it. So what if I want to cut a knurl on a piece of quarter of an inch diameter brass bar? Here's one in the chuck, first of all I'm facing across the end. Once that's done, I can move the cutting tool out of the way and clamp on the knurling tool. On smaller parts I could go a lot faster, but I thought for the purposes of the video I would put the lathe in back gear and run it slowly. And as you can see it's still moving about and very slowly the two knurling wheels cut the pattern of the knurl into the work. I soon got fed up of the job running slowly so I speeded it up, and here you can see the knurl appearing much quicker. Once this type of knurling tool is clamped onto the work, it's difficult to undo the clamp, but you don't need to. Just pull the tool holder back. That releases the knurl from the tool. As you can clearly see from the still image, that's a pretty good knurl on a very small piece of metal, and I could have used a smaller one. After you've cut a knurl on a piece of metal, remember that the edges will be very sharp. It's always a good idea to clean off the front of the work and round the edges. There we have it, a piece of quarter of an inch diameter brass with a really deep knurl on it, which would have taken a good bit longer had I have used my normal knurling tool, because that applies a lot of side pressure. Here it is on a piece of steel. Normally I would machine the piece of steel to make it concentric with the chuck jaws. It doesn't really matter though because the tool compensates. Look at the quality of this knurl, it's different to the other one, it's not as spiky. I could have made this knurl a lot deeper by doing multi-passes and winding in the tool before every pass. After another pass it looks like this. Slightly different to the first one, but if I carried on they would both look the same. Sometimes I don't want a crisscross effect on the work. So I also bought a knurling tool that will cut a knurl that isn't crisscrossed. This knurling tool is very simple. All it is is a hardened wheel that you press against the rotating work. Once again, this was a very cheap tool. Am I complaining about that? Well, 
Yes and no. I'd rather pay more money for a higher quality tool. But I suppose, as this knurling tool will get very little use in its life in the workshop, it should be OK. With one pass it did this. I didn't want to put too much pressure on this tool, and this is what I got after the first pass. I think it's going to be more suitable for brass. I'll try it on a piece of brass. I did find that by applying pressure with this single point knurling tool, it actually rotated my top slide, mainly because it wasn't very tight. So I tightened it up at both sides with the set screws, and now the knurl is much more square to the work. I managed to produce quite a deep knurl, maybe a bit too deep, very quickly. The knurl doesn't look too bad, the edge is quite dangerous, so once again I used the cutting tool to clean up the edge. I also turned some of the metal down behind it too. When I remove the part from the chuck, you can see what I mean. Initially the knurl didn't look very good, but once I clean either side of it, it looks alright. Here are the other two knurling tools side by side, and the results on the bar also side by side. In my opinion, this is by far the better tool. It's more robust, much stronger, and much better made. I wasn't impressed with this knurling tool at all on the steel, but it was good on brass. And really, I think I would only knurl brass like this anyway. The clamp type of knurling tool worked very well both on a thick steel bar and a small brass bar. What I don't like about this tool though is it's not very well made, it's very fragile. The mounting block that fits into the tool holder is only screwed to the main tool with two very small allen bolts. This would have been a far better tool if the body of it had have been made from one piece of steel. This clip shows all three of the tools on the bench. I've fitted the clamp type knurling tool into a tool holder because I will be using that. I need to buy another quick change tool holder for the one on the right hand side. That's it for this knurling tool feature. I'd just like to say stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.